that every last Friday of the month is our battle at midnight. Today is not an exception. I just want to thank those of you that made it in this code. The Bible says, He that watcheth the wind shall not sow. He that watched the wind shall not sow. We, 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 we planned for this. It was not an emergency. But thank God that you came. The Lord shall honor you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. And those of you that are watching from home, wherever you are, the Lord be with you also. In the name of Jesus Christ. What a mighty day. What a mighty God. This is our second time of praying today. And we are going to pray until the next day. Because God is God. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. We are rejoicing and we are glad to be part of it. Every time God calls us to come to him, he didn't just call us to see our face, he called us to bless us. This is the day of blessings. Just give him all glory, give him all exaltation. This is a night of an encounter. Just begin to worship you wherever you are. Release yourself. Let God move in you today. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. Thank you for who you are. Who you represent and who you will always be. There is none like you. There is none that will be compared unto you. Generations will come and go, but you remain the same. You are the unchangeable changer. Heaven and earth, the world say, will pass away, but your word will not be dragged to the mud. Your word shall be constant. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to come to you today, to be in your presence. The words in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. I just want you, wherever you are, just begin to blast tongues, worship him, exalt his name, give him all glory. Give him all exaltation. Magnify his holy name. He is God all by himself. There is none like him. There is none that will be compared unto him. Generations will come and go. God will remain the same. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, Father, for you are the God that created the heavens and the earth. We bless you this morning, this night, as we go even into the morning, because you are God. We bless you, Lord. We worship you for the opportunity that you have given to us again and again to come into your presence. The word say, in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. You are I am that I am, ancient of days, omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient God. There is none like you. Nothing will be compared to you. Generations will come and go. You are God that is constant. The Bible says the Lord sits in the top heaven and make the earth his footstool. How big and great is our God. Our God is a mighty God. The word says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Everyone that is hearing the sound of my voice, Lord, I release the blessings of God upon them. You are blessed beyond measure. This is your year of fulfillment. This is your year of new things. A year that God is going to bring triumph in your life. You shall hear a sound of joy. Among men, they shall, you, you will be counted among men. In nations, you will be counted. You shall be celebrated this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Today is our battle at midnight. But on this program, we call it the night of encounter. Without an encounter, a lot of things don't change in our lives. Some of us have been hearing the word of God before. Now, we have heard it again and again. And some of the places that we are going to read today, we have read it before. But what is going to be the difference? When you come to God and defy some things, the weather is so cold this night. I say, what is going on? But we are here. Some people will be holding their comforter right now, holding their bed, getting close to where they are because it's cold. But if God can let you to stand in his presence 
And at this time of the night, when people are staying close to their bed, staying close to their television, people are just glued to their house, but God allowed you to come to his presence. Amen. That is a sacrifice. Thank you, God is going to put upon you the garment of praise. Amen. Every time we sacrifice for God, God is always after sacrifice. Romans chapter 12, verse 1, the Bible says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord. For this is your reasonable service. Listen to me. Every time you present, God is interested in seeing your body. Once you present it in the altar, it becomes a holocaust. The Spirit of God will consume it with fire. But you are coming out alive because every sacrifice dies. But God says you will become a living sacrifice. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for giving us the opportunity again. We pray, O oh Lord, this hour, we take authority over this vicinity and this proximity. We take authority over the city of Lincoln, the county of Gwinnett, and the state of Georgia. We take authority over Atlanta Metropolis. We take authority over United States of America. We take authority over the world at large. Everywhere the voice, our voice will be heard today. Let it begin to bring the desired result. Amen. Lord, we hide under, under you. We don't want to be seen in any way, but may you be seen through us. Amen. The word said that the entrance of the word giveth light and understanding to the simple. Lord, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Let the word and the prayers that we are going to make today not be an enticing word of a man, but let it be the word of God that we bring glory to thy holy name. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you all ready to pray today? Yes. Oh, la, ba, 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 ba. We're going to pray. When we pray, something happens. Something great begins to happen. Amen. In this night of encounter, I want us to open our Bibles to the book of Genesis chapter 28. I'll talk to us about the man that encountered God and he didn't know he has God with him. And a lot of us have had such opportunity. And we, 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 we come to the presence of God and we go back and nothing change. This young man, his name was Jacob. In Genesis 28, the Bible said after he has lied to his father, he has lied to his mother, he has lied for his, against his brother, he has lied against himself. And he thought he received blessing. You know, sometimes you, you think you have received something. And when you go further, you discover you did not receive that thing. How many of us have, sometimes you, you receive something, you feel you have received something. And you go and you look at the things that you think you have received. They are not there. That was what happened to Jacob. Jacob lied to himself. And he said to his father, I am this or I saw. And the father blessed Esau. And Jacob ran away. The mother was preparing him, saying, go to Laban and stay there. Until the, 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 the anger of your brother comes down. But in the, in, to cut the long story short, while he was running, in verse 11 of Genesis 28, I want you to see something here. In verse 11, the Bible says, so he came to a certain place and stayed there all night. Oh, la ba ba ba. Because the sun had set there, he still took one of the stones of the place and put it on his head. And he lay down in that place to sleep. Verse 12. Then he dreamt, and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth, and, and his top reached the heavens. And the angel of God were ascending and descending on it. In verse 13, the Bible says, And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am. How many of you can get this kind of level of encounter and miss it? The Lord stood there and said, I am the Lord, God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac, the land which you lay. I will give to you and your descendants. 
Also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. And in you and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Verse 16. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. With the little that we just read here, this guy had an, an encounter that will change his life forever. And God did not even go out of order. God began to speak to him, saying, this is what will happen to you. But he left. How can somebody come so close to blessings and not get it? He left and went and labored somewhere else. By understanding, he knew that that place was sacred. That place was different. Do you know that that was the altar of Abraham? Yes. In Bethel, that Abraham laid an altar in the first time he came down from Haran. And when he went to Egypt and came back from Egypt, he came back to that altar, fortified it. When he went to the battle of Chadurama in Genesis 14, he came back to that altar and blessed God. That was where God met him. A man called Mekishenik, the king of Salem, met with Abraham in that same place. Oh, blah, 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 blah. There was a lot of spirits that have commuted in that place. And his grandson had an opportunity of entering into an ancient altar, a portal that led to the presence of God. He went into a place of idol worship. The Bible says he left and went to the house of labor. And there he spent 20 years in penury, in anguish. How many of us have begun so well with God? And we think that life, because we have seen it all, this kind of encounter, people don't have it twice, but Jacob had it twice. God can give you one chance. But this guy got a second chance. He could have died and never become who God said he will be. And in that situation, sometimes we blame God. But the Bible says he left. And if you read further, the Bible says Jacob became a servant. A man that the whole destiny of the world. The Bible says, in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. In you. The blessing of the world is tied to this man. But he was working for somebody. Laboring for 20 years. He couldn't even pay bright price. It was so tough that he has to serve to pay. So he has to serve to eat food. He has to serve to have shelter. That at the time he wanted to leave, the man said, you didn't make any money here. I have fed you for all these years, so I, you don't deserve to live with anything. Ba, 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 ba. Let's move forward. Genesis 32. After he had gone to waste his time, he came back. One thing that protected Jacob was he never worshipped the idol of labor. If he has worshipped that idol, he will die there and never can come back. God never lacked tools. Even though Jacob was the man for the, for the oil, if he fails God, the oil will not leave. It will still remain in his generation. And somebody else will pick it up. Maybe after one generation or two generations. Genesis 32. Today is a night of encounter. You must encounter your destiny today. I don't care whether you have missed it before. Jacob missed it first. 
We just saw that he missed it. The Lord is in this place, but I knew it not. Even after he knew, what did he do? He left. He would have settled there. If God said, this is where I will keep you. This is where I will bless you. This is where I will do everything for you. Why leave that place? Genesis 32. So the Bible says he went and labored. And labored for 20 years. He has now accumulated wives and children. And these are baggages. When you are working with God with such level of responsibility, it's going to be tough. Now he's coming back with a lot of responsibility. After God said, get out from this house because you are going to die here and become nothing. The Bible says he came back to Bethel. In that Genesis 32, if we read from verse 22, this is a man that likes to accumulate. He likes to take things. But this time, he was releasing things. The Bible says, and he arose that night. One thing about night is that is always the time to have an encounter. The first encounter was in the night. The second encounter was at night also. The Bible says he rose up that night and took his two wives and his two female servants and his eleven sons and crossed over the foot of Jabbok. Verse 23. The Bible said he took them, sent them over the brook and sent over what he had. Then Jacob was left alone. And the man wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. Now, when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip. And the socket of his Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go. For the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go. Unless what? So today he knows that blessing is tied to that place. So he said unto him, What is your name? Every test that you did not pass, you will repeat. This same question was asked to him 20 years ago by his father. What is your name? He said, I am Israel's son. Now, that same question. Let me tell you something. The father was talking to him, but God was speaking to him. When he lied to Isaac, he lied to God. That same question he failed 20 years ago was repeated. What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Oh, la, 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 la. And the angel said to him, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you are you have struggled with God and with men and has prevailed. Then Jacob asked, saying, Tell me your name. your name, I pray. And he said, Why is it that you ask about my name? And he blessed him. Verse 30. So Jacob called the name of the place Paniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. Second time he met with God. We are going to pray. We are going to pray. I have seen God face to face. Most times in life, it is the opposite in life that prepares you for the positive. All the time he has been lying was what built him up to tell the truth. Because lie didn't pay him for 20 years. If that lie was successful, Jacob will not say the truth. But he has lied all his life. It never paid him. So he now, by experience, knew that something was wrong with my lifestyle. I need to change. And Jacob was a man that looked like to take things before, accumulate things. But this time, before he met God the second time, the Bible says he sent everything he had away. He gave it away. And he was left alone. And in that place, there was an encounter again. Divine encounter. Tonight, I don't know where you are. The Lord shall encounter you again. Amen. If you have missed it in, before, like Jacob, God is coming back the second time. Amen. There's going to be another opportunity for you to make it right. Amen. 
and you better do it right this time because if Jacob had missed God this time I don't think he has time anymore he should be in his 60s by this time or 70s he was already getting old there is nothing to do even the blessings that was upon him he missed it Jacob never became that man it was his son Joseph that became that enigma that man that nobody have ever seen a man that was a slave became a prime minister in a foreign land that the king has to even listen to him. That was the position of Jacob. But because Jacob missed his time, you will never miss your time. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank God that God recovered him in, in Joseph. God restored Jacob in Joseph. Joseph was a restoration to Jacob. He saw at least he saw glory in his lifetime. Let us pray. Every blessing that I have missed before, Lord, restore me today. Whatever anointing that I have missed before, restore me today. Every power that I have missed before, restore me today. But by the power and the authority in the name of Jesus Christ, let restoration begin to happen in my life right now. Everything that I have missed, I have missed it out of ignorance. I have missed it because of I don't know, because of lack of knowledge. I have missed it because I was too young. I have missed it. Lord, restore me. Restore me today. Restore me by the power and the authority. Restore me right now. Restore me right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Many of you, God is going to begin to put back some things in your life. Let's go and see Jacob's father. Genesis 26. I just want to touch one thing there and I'm going to move forward. Isaac. The same encounter that his father had with famine. Isaac had the same encounter with famine. In Genesis 26, if you look at verse 1, the Bible said there was famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the day of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, the king of Philistines, in Gary. Hallelujah. And the Bible said, Then the Lord appeared unto him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Sojourn in this land, which I shall tell you. Dwell in this land, and I will be with you and bless thee. For you and your descendants, I will give all these lands. And I will perform the oath which I swore unto Abraham your father. And I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of the heaven. I will give you and your descendants all these lands, and in you and your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be what? The same thing God told Abraham, he told Isaac. He said it to Jacob. He's a generational God. When God calls a man, a woman, God is calling the whole generation. When God sees you, God has seen four generations in you at once. That was the same blessing that God told Abraham. He moved into Isaac and moved into Jacob. Jacob almost lost it. But look at what happened. If we read now in that same, look at verse 12. After God had told him not to leave, because Isaac was about to go to Egypt, there was famine and there was no water for their crops. But the Bible said after God spoke to him, that was his own encounter. Then Isaac what did what? Sold in that land. The land was dry as dry. There was no water. But God said, stay in this land and I will be with you. The guy began to dig well. Every well he dug, there was water coming out. And the Philistines were covering the well. He would dig another one, he would come out, they would cover it. So he began to grow. Look at what the Bible says. And Isaac sold in the land and reaped in the same year what? One hundred fold. So if Isaac invested 1,000 crops, he will get 1,000 times 1,000. That's a million crops. That's a lot of harvest in one year. And the Lord blessed him. And the man began his name change. You know, when you have money, your name will change. Even the author could not call him Isaac. From, from verse 1, they were saying, Isaac, Isaac, he was a poor man. But the moment he had money, the author was afraid to even call his name. His name became the man. The man, and what, what? Began to prosper. And continue to what? 
prospering until he became the man began to prosper and continued to prosper until he became very prosperous for he had possessions of flocks of possessions of herbs and a great number of servants so the Philistines envied him verse 15 now the Philistines have stopped up all the wells which he, his father servant had dug in the days of Abraham his father and they have filled them with earth verse 16 and Abimelech that's the king of the land now said unto Isaac go away from us for you are more mightier than we are As I want you to say more mightier today God is going to make you mightier than your enemy the more they close well for him the more water come out I want you to know that there is water in your desert everywhere you are that is dry it doesn't matter who is there they will stay in drought you will be in in good fertility Amen. it will be in visitation the man discovered that this guy there is something about him the man said go away go away from us you are what mightier than we are even when he left if you read it down this is a very funny story he left and went far away in the borderline and began to walk there again and the whole of the Philistines began to walk for him that the king have to come one day say now I have discovered that there is something about you Please sign an agreement that you will never fight us because you have everything. The whole country was working for him. God is going to make you mightier than your enemy. The people that want to stop your flow, they will not know that the more they try to stop you, you will begin to be blessed the more. In fact, it was the opposition that helped, the, that helped Isaac to become that man. Because the more they fight him, the more he had the ability to work hard. The more they fight him, the more he had the ability to, if everything has rolled out for him. Isaac will not know how faith, faithful and how favored God has given him. <clears throat> In the name of Jesus Christ, he was mightier than his enemy. The Lord shall make you mightier than your enemy. The Lord shall make you mightier than your enemy. In the name of Jesus Christ. First Samuel chapter 10. Thank you, Jesus. First Samuel chapter 10, are we there? After this, now we are going to go into some series of prayers, dangerous prayers. The Bible said, Then Samuel took the flax of oil and poured it on the head and kissed him and said, It is not because the Lord had anointed you commander over his inheritance when you have departed from me today you will find two men by Rachel's sepulchre in the territory of Benjamin at Zelzah and they will say to you the donkey which you went to look for have been found and now your father has ceased caring about the donkey and is worried about you saying what shall I do about my son verse 3 then you shall go. Hallelujah. First Samuel chapter 10. Then you shall go on forward. We are in verse 3 now. From there and come to the where? Tabian street of Tabor. There the three men going up to God at Bethel will meet you. One carrying three young goats. Another carrying three loaves of bread and another carry three skin of wine and they will greet you and give you two loaves of bread which you shall receive from their hand verse 5 hallelujah after that you shall come to the hill of God where the Philistine garrison is and it will happen when you have come there to the city that you will meet a group of prophets coming down from the high place with strange ins instruments and tubement and a flute and a harp before them and they will also prophesy I want you to understand that every stage here was a blessing this guy was just a regular guy but what happened sometimes problem is also good for us 
There are some problems that is what we call good problem. Like the man of God, uh, the, 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 the uh, what's he called? The man, the man of, uh, what's he called? John Lewis, that was in, in the house of Fred, who just passed away last year. That's what he called good trouble. When they used to beat them and lock them up, and as they continued to beat them and lock them up, they were getting more recognition about the civil rights until that civil right was passed by the president. There is a good problem to have. This was one of those good problems. Saul, his father lost a, a, a donkey and he went out to look for the donkey. On the process of looking for the donkey, they went into the house of the prophet Samuel. But God had told Samuel before then that he will send the king to his house. He said, by tomorrow I'm going to send a king to you. And Samuel didn't know who the king was until Saul showed up. While he was saying he was looking for his father's donkey, Samuel said, the donkey you are looking for is already found. But wait for me here till tomorrow until I will tell you why you came to me. So they stayed that night with Samuel. The next day, Samuel broke bread and wine with them and began to anoint him and told him that as you depart from me, you shall become another person. When you leave this program tonight, you shall become a different person. The first significant thing that happened is that when you get to Rachel's sepulchre, why was that mentioned? Saul was a Benjamite. Rachel was the mother of Benjamin. Rachel has died many, many years ago. But because of... When Rachel died, she was giving birth to Benjamin when she died. So, her name was mentioned that when you get to Rachel's grave, you will see men that are there that will greet you. Saul has passed many men before when he was coming to Samuel. Nobody greeted him. But because the oil was upon his head, everywhere he went, people were greeting him. People were blessing him. You see, as you pass there, you will see other people going to Bethel. And these are wealthy men. They were carrying three goats. They were carrying three jars of wine. They were carrying three loaves of bread. They took two out of it and gave to Saul. Today you shall start to receive gift. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will receive from people you don't know. These people didn't know him. When they saw him, the Bible said they saluted him. And they gave him two loaves and two goats and two wine. They had only one now. And they blessed him and they left. Men shall begin to bless you. In fact, when he left, the Bible said he came to another place. Prophets were coming down from the mountain. They began to sing for him. And started prophesying unto his life. From today, I say every part of your life shall be filled with praise. The Lord shall bless you with men. I say men will be a blessing to you. Women shall bless you by the power and the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. That is favor. When God anoints you with favor, everything that has never worked for you will begin to work for you. The moment that oil came upon Saul, Saul became the most favored man in Israel. That wherever he went, by the time he got home, a lot of men were following him. His father was now wondering, what is going on here? You left alone with two servants. Why are you coming back with this drove of men? Because God has remembered him. The Lord shall remember your family today. The Lord will remember you today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Esther chapter 2. Thank you, Jesus. Esther chapter 2. Look at verse 15. This was when the king wanted a new wife after his wife disgraced him. And there were young girls, virgins, that were brought into the palace, selected from among the whole tribes of Israel. And there were Babylonians. There were Babylon then. And Esther was among the people that was brought also. But they were trained in the way of the king. Esther, when he, she stepped into the family, she refused to eat the king's food. She began to fast and began to ask questions. And the king chamberlain has told her how to minister to the king. What to do? There was a, a specific perfume that the man told her to rub in her body. And she was rubbing it and she was praying and she was rubbing it and she was praying 
on the day of their showing forth to the king. If you look at from verse 15 of Esther chapter 2, the Bible says, Now when the turn came for Esther, the daughter of Ab Abihel, and the uncle of Bedekiah, who was taking her as his daughter to go in to the king, she requested nothing but what Hagi, the king's inner, which is the king's chamberlain, and the custodian of the women, advised. And Esther what? Obtained favor in the sight of all who saw her. Verse 16. So Esther was taken to King Ahasuerus in his royal place in the tenth month, which is the month of Tabith, and in the seventh year of his reign. Verse 17. We are going to pray. And the king loved Esther more than all the other women. And she obtained grace and favor in the sight more than all the virgins. So he set his royal crown upon her, on her head, and made her the queen instead of fasting. Today, let favor begin to enclose you. Amen. Let favor begin to clothe you. Amen. The Bible says Esther obtained favor among everybody, not just the king. Everyone that looked at her want to give her a gift. From today, people will not see you as a source of taking. They will see you as a person they will bless. People will see you and bring business to you. They will see you and give you jobs. They will see you and give you information that will benefit you. From today, you shall not lack any good thing. Everyone that will see you will see you as somebody that they need to help. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says she obtained favor from every man, every woman, everybody that looked at her. Not just some people. From servant to the king. Everyone that looked at her wanted to bless her, wanted to favor her. Let that favor come upon you. Receive the favor of Esther today by the power and the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone that will look upon you from today shall favor you. This is a year that we, things will begin to happen for you supernaturally. By the power and the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord shall bless you today and you shall hold your peace. By the power and the authority. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now we are going to pray. Because of our time. I will not have time to go into all the details of this. Now we are going to pray. Revelation chapter 5. Everywhere I call is a prayer point. I want you to position yourself in any way that you can pray better. You want to lie down. You want to stand up. You want to sit down. But I want you to be comfortable. And pray this prayer with everything that is in you. Because the Lord shall make something happen for you today. Revelation chapter 5. Are we there? Look at verse 12. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive what? Power. The first thing that God will give you this year is power. To receive what? Power. And what? Riches. And wisdom. And strength. And honor. And glory. And blessings. Let every of this begin to come to you in that sequence. Receive power today. The Bible says, Jesus said, tarry in Jerusalem until the Spirit of God is upon you. And you shall be endued with what? Power. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, he said, and you shall receive power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, the first gift to man after Christ came was power. God said you cannot function until you have received power. Power is what will introduce you into wealth and wisdom and the strength of God and honor. Let the power of God come upon you right now. By the power and the authority, what you could not do before, you will begin to do them. Everything that was impossible, God is going to be the God of possibility for you. From today, things that has never happened will begin to happen strangely. Because you shall manifest power. The Bible said in Romans chapter 8 verse 19, For the endless expectations of creations are waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. You shall manifest glory today. I say you will manifest. You will manifest. Everywhere you go, there shall be something exceptional about you. The people will see you and know that because they met you, that their life has changed. Because you became their friend, their life has changed. Because you began to walk in a place, that place has begun to grow. The Bible says when Potiphar went to buy slaves in Genesis, he did not go there to buy a manager. 
He went because he needed more workforce. But he saw a rude guy, Joseph. He brought him home. But time will tell. When Joseph came into the house of the man, his business began to quadruple. Everything concerning Potiphar began to change. And Potiphar said, I have noticed by experience that since you came into this house, everything has changed. And he made him a manager over everything he had. Today receive such grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, la, ba, 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 ba. Because Joseph was in the house of Potiphar, the business of Potiphar began to grow. That Potiphar has to hand over everything he had except the wife unto Joseph. Today, everywhere you walk, they will not look down on you. You will be the source of the blessings of that place because the glory of God is upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, wherever you are, you shall manifest the glory of God by the power and the authority. Receive power. Receive power. Receive power. Receive power. Receive power. Right now. Receive power. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let the power of God come upon you from the crowns of your head to the sole of your foot by the authority and the power in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Will God give you power? Then begin to be ready to get wealthy. Because he said, what is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings in the name of Jesus Christ? Amen. Oh, Psalm 112. So after you have received power, you are ready to get into well, divine well. I'm talking about the the wealth that is coming from above. Psalm 112. Look at what the Bible said here. In the name of Jesus Christ. Praise ye the Lord. Verse 1. It says, Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, who delighted greatly in his commandments. His descendants will be mighty on earth. I want us to pray there for us. Your descendants, your seed shall be mighty upon this earth. Your sons and your daughters, I want you to lay your hand upon them in the spirit. If they are here, lay your hand upon them physically. Say, you shall be mighty upon this earth. My seed, he said, the seed, your seed shall be mighty upon this earth. His descendants shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Every of your children shall be mighty. If the devil is attacking them today and they are not performing well, you say, Lord, this my children, you say they shall be mighty. I lay my hand upon my sons and my daughters in the spirit. You are mighty in the earth. You, you, are, you are my generation. You shall be blessed. Your seed shall be mighty on earth. If your children are not doing well in school, instead of abusing them and telling them they are not good, they are good for nothing. Say you are mighty. As I lay my hand upon you, I invoke the word of God in, in the book of Psalm 112, verse 2. He said, My seed shall be mighty upon the earth. My seed shall be mighty upon the earth. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible said, The generation of the upright shall be what? Blessed. Every of your generation going forward from today, blessings shall not elude them. They shall be blessed in the morning, in the noon, at night. When they are sleeping, they shall be blessed. In the name of Jesus. Verse 3. The Bible says, wealth and riches shall be in his house. I claim that for myself. Wealth and riches shall be in my house, and his righteousness shall endure forever. Is that your own? You say, wealth and riches. Did you see it in your Bible? Don't be afraid of wealth. This year you shall have enough of it. The Bible says, wealth and riches shall be in his house. Things that people go out to look for shall be in your house. The things that people struggle to get shall be in your house. When the Bible says, wealth and riches. Women will come to you. Men will come to you with their blessings. The Lord shall give you the forces of the Gentiles today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. Isaiah chapter 61. Isaiah 61. We are still praying. We are going to read 5 and 6. Thank you Jesus. Oh, Rabba, Rabba, Bali, Kanama. Look at verse 5. The Bible says, Strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. I want you to be ready to expand your business, your ministry, your job. Strangers shall stand. Strangers. People you don't know, they are the ones that will be working for you. The Bible says, Strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. 
and the sons of foreigners shall be your plow men and your white dresser. Begin to pray that prayer. Lord, let strangers stand and feed my flock. Everywhere I go, people that I don't even know, they will work for me. Strangers shall stand and they will feed my flocks. Foreigners, aliens, they, some translations say aliens. Foreigners, verse 6. Foreigners, foreigners, people that look different, they shall feed, they shall take care of my, 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 my vineyard. They shall be the one to do the plow in my vineyard. You say foreigners shall be my pro men and my wine dressers. Verse 6. But you shall be named the priest of the Lord. They shall call you the servant of our God. You shall eat what? The riches of the Gentiles. And their glory you shall boast. Every riches of the Gentiles you will eat. The Bible says, I'm telling you, when, when Pharaoh hired Joseph, Pharaoh was still worshipping idol. Why Joseph was sitting on that throne? Joseph was not interested in converting him to be, you know, some of the mistakes that we make as Christians. God will bring a man, a woman that will change your life. You say he's an unbeliever. The Bible says you shall eat the what? The wealth of the unbelievers. The riches of the Gentiles. In fact, when Pharaoh was giving blessing to Abraham, Pharaoh did not change to serve the God of Abraham. Pharaoh was still worshipping the God of the Egyptians. But he gave the wealth of Egypt to Abraham. So that God will begin to... So when you are looking this year, the Bible says strangers shall feed thy flock. Don't be depending on, oh, that's your brother or that's your sister. Begin to expand your horizon, your thoughts. God will send men you have never met. People you have never seen. They shall come and bless you. I say receive it today. Receive it today. Receive it today. People from other race, other places. People from other countries. People that you will never meet in life. The Lord shall put them in your way. They shall become a blessing for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Receive it now. Receive it now. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Isaiah chapter 60. The Bible says in verse 1, we are reading 1 to 3 and we read verse 11. Arise! So from today you shall begin to rise. Shine, for your light is come. And the glory of the Lord is what is risen upon thee. Behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. And cross darkness the people. But the Bible says the Lord shall arise over you. And his glory shall be seen on you. Verse 3 is my emphasis. He said, and Gentiles shall come to thy light, and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. Today, every unbeliever, the hidden, the Gentiles, may they begin to come to your light. Because you shall become a light wherever you are found. You are the light in that place. Jesus said, let your light so shine that men shall see thy good works and give glory to thy Father which is in heaven. Today, your light is shining. Your light must shine. Let Gentiles begin to come. They are coming in their troops, in their numbers. Gentiles shall come to thy light. And the Bible says the kings, the influential people, the great people, the wealthy people, the politicians, they are coming to the brightness because as you continue to shine, they are coming to the brightness of thy rising. Receive that glory right now. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says lift up your eyes and look around and see that they all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar. And your daughters shall not at your side. Every of your son, whatever they are, because there is more than enough to take care of them. The Bible says you are sons. Some of them are not children you give birth to. But these are people you have mentored. People that have believed in you. Your sons are coming from afar. And your daughters shall nurse their baby around you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at verse 11. The Bible says, Therefore, your gates shall be open when? You see, some, sometimes, continually, every gate in your life, your bank account, I, I want you to begin to open them now in the spirit. Your gates shall be open what? Continually. They shall not be shut day or night. I say, while you are sleeping, you are being blessed. While you wake up, you are being blessed. Because the door of the spirit is open against you. It's open for you. Every gate that is shut against you, every blessing gate, 
The Bible says, lift up your gates, Psalm 24, verse 7. O ye gates, be lifted up, you everlasting doors, that the King of glory shall come in. The Bible says, your gates shall be opened continually. They shall not be shut, day or night, that men shall bring to you the wealth of what? The Gentiles and their kings in what? Procession. They will be coming in procession. God is going to bring men. They will bring the wealth of the Gentiles to you. The wealth of the Gentiles, the forces of the Gentiles is coming to you right now. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Your gate shall be open continually. Receive it now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Are you still ready to pray? Leviticus 26. Thank you, Jesus. Today, when you live here, you are coming out as a different person. Whatever has followed you into this place, it is over. Leviticus 27, 26. Look at verse 9 and 9 and 10. The Bible says, For I will look on you favorably. The Lord said he will favor you. I will look on you what favorably and make you fruitful, multiply you, and confirm my covenant with you. I will look on you what favorably. From today, you are favored by the God. You will be favored by the seas. The ocean shall favor you. The land will favor you. The highway shall favor you. The byways. When God favor you, everything around you will begin to favor you. The Bible says, For I will look on you favorably and make you fruitful, multiplying you and confirm my covenant with you. You shall eat the old harvest. Are, are you seeing verse, verse 10? You shall eat what? The old harvest. Everything your fathers did not get, you will get it. Remember when God told Abraham, say, your children will sin against me and they will go into a foreign land and they will stay there 400 years, but they are not coming out empty-handed. Everyone that was not paid in Egypt, the generation that came out collected the whole wealth of Egypt. Today, everything that your generation did not get, your ancestors, the Bible says you shall eat what? The old harvest. Begin to eat it now. Every blessing that has not been released in your family is coming to you. You shall eat the old harvest and clear out the old because of the new. There's a new one coming. So you are eating double portion. The old harvest and the new one. Receive it. In the name of Jesus Christ. You shall eat both the old and the new. You will clear them out. And in the Bible says in verse 12, and I will walk among you and be your God. And you shall be what? My people. Today, God said you shall be my people. Whether you like it or not, you can't escape God anymore. If my people that are called by my name, the Bible says, shall humble themselves and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. He said, I will hear from heaven, I will come down, I will heal their land. Today, your lands have been healed. Amen. You are unscapable to God. Amen. Wherever you are, you are marked for blessings. Amen. You are marked for blessings. Amen. You are marked for blessings. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Job chapter 42. Job 42. Verse 10. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Are you getting something out of this today? Yes. I thank God you are writing. In some of you, I see you are writing. Because you, this prayer, you can keep it by yourself and pray it again and again and again. And let God continue to make his name magnified in your life. Job 42. Are we there? Verse 10. Look at verse 10. Thank you, Jesus. He said, And the Lord restored Job. Today God is going to restore you. Amen. The Lord restored Job losses when he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Verse 11. Then all his brothers, all his sisters, and all those who had been his acquaintance before came to him to eat food with him in his house. And they consoled him and comforted him. 
for all the adversities that the Lord had brought upon him. Each one gave him a piece of silver and each a ring of gold. Verse 12. Now the Lord blessed the later days of Job more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 of sheep oxen and there's a lot of things I don't have to read them now. But what happened now? Everyone that have left you when things were not good, they are coming back. The Bible says all his brothers and sisters, they are the first people that will call family. Family know the size of money. The moment you begin to live in a better house, they will they'll come from everywhere. They will come. Whether you invite them or not, they are coming. But the Bible says also his acquaintances, people that were his friends, that left him, they all came and celebrated with him. But not only did they come, but they came and consoled him. They came and apologized. Many of you will begin to expect people are coming back to apologize to you for what they did. For abandoning you when they thought that your life has ended. They didn't know that God is about to introduce you. When men, when men forsake you, that is God's introduction. Men's conclusion is God's what? Introduction. So just don't care when people conclude that this is how your life will be. But just remember that God is about to introduce you. Because God will always hide it from, from them. They are coming, not only coming to console you, they are coming with gift. From today, people that even didn't have to give to you. The Bible said they began to give to Job silver and gold. Let the silver and gold of your family, of your friends begin to come to you. Of your acquaintances, receive them now. By the power and the authority. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. This night of encounter, you are encountering divine wealth. You will not walk in poverty anymore. You shall not walk in lack anymore. You are entering into abundance. You shall have it more abundantly. The Bible says, Jesus said, I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The life you are going to live this time is going to be an exceptional life. A life that is sacred. A life that is great. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Do you still want to pray? First Chronicle chapter 12. God will begin to give you men as gifts. You know, when God brings you to the place of he has given you a name, after you receive a name from God, the next gift is the gift of man. First Chronicle chapter 12. Hallelujah. Look at verse 22. We are reading 22 to 24. The Bible says, for at that time they came to David day by day to help him until it was a great army like the army of God. Let men begin to come to you. I want, I want you to pray. Say, God, give me the gift of men. The gift of men. Let men begin to come to you. The Bible says they came to David what day by day. Every day men were coming to him. Women were coming. Children were coming. They came to David for at that time they came to David day by day to help him until it was a great army, like the army of God. The Bible says in verse 23. Now, these were the numbers of the divisions that were equipped for war and came to David to help to Hebron to turn over the kingdom of Saul to him, according to the word of the Lord. Let the enemy, the kingdom of the enemy, against you, the powers that were fighting you before be turned over to you. Men shall come to you. These are trained. You are not bring, these are not loafers. Men that are trained in different places, people that have different capacity, abilities, they are coming. They are not coming for you to train them. They are coming with their expertise. They are coming with their professionalism. They are coming with their frugalism. They are coming with their wealth. They are coming with everything they have to help you. They are coming to help you. Receive the gift of men. Receive the gift of men. Receive the gift of women. Let people come. Let your capacity begin to enlarge now. In everything that you do, you will never lack men. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord shall send men to you by the power and the authority. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for we know that you have done it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Job chapter 5. Job 5. Look at verse 22. Yes, Lord. The word is 
In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Psalm 45, verse 12. I call. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. 45, verse 12. Father. Yes, Lord. And the daughters of Tyre will come with gift. The rich among the people will seek your favor. Begin to pray. Say, Father, let the daughters of the king, the daughters of the wealthy people, the rich among the nations, they will begin to come to me. And the daughters of Tyre shall come with gift. The rich among the people will seek your favor. Let wealthy people as a source of blessing. They will seek your favor. Let the daughters of Tyre begin to come to you right now by the power and the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, and the daughters of Tyre shall come with gifts. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. This is a great one. Jesus Christ said in John chapter 4 verse 38. Oh, Rabba Baba, Nikana Masiko Tobo. Yes, Lord. Father, oh, Jesus. Jesus. John chapter 4, verse 38. I sent you to reap that for which you have not labored. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor. Somebody was asking me one day, say, what does that mean? Say, does it mean that 
we are going to walk into people's farm and begin to harvest it. I say, well, that's not what it means. There are blessings that has not manifested in your generation. People that worked for that blessing, they never saw it, they died. God said, you will enter into it. The children of Israel, when they were in Egypt, their ancestors worked for 400 days for free. But the people that were there when Moses came, they were the ones that reaped the blessings of their fathers. The things that they did not labor for, the labor they did not put, they reaped when they were leaving Egypt and they were collecting all the gold and the silvers and the bronze and the precious stone of Egypt. It was the inheritance of their fathers, even though it was not named at that time. But because at the time that they left, God has granted them favor among their masters. They collected everything collectible today. Everything that has never happened in your family. Maybe blessings of 10 generations ago is coming to you. Others have labeled. You will enter into their labor. Like what we are doing now in America. Some people died for this word of God to be preached. We that are coming up now, we are entering into their labor. We didn't see what they saw. There were people that couldn't preach in this world, in the world before. The apostles were beheaded. Many of them were hanged. Jesus was even killed. But today we can say, praise the Lord. And everybody will say, hallelujah. Because somebody has labored. And we are entering into their labor. Today, everyone that has labored in your generation, you are the one that is going to reap their labor. The Bible says, others have labored. You shall enter into their labor. Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. Many of you, your ancestors, they never bought a house. But they worked all their life. That money that they saved in the spirit, God is going to send it to you. God is going to send it to you. Every blessing that they carry and they died in it, God is bringing it to you. Receive it. And it's not coming one fold. It's coming up to multiple of them. The Bible said, Jesus said, this is Jesus Christ. I send you to reap that which you have not labeled. Others have labeled and you have entered into their labor. Begin to enter into the labor of other people. Enter into their harvest today. Enter into it and begin to receive it. Whatever it is. Maybe in your family nobody was ever favored before. But you will be the first person that shall be favored. Maybe nobody was promoted in your family. But you shall be the one that will be promoted. Nobody even owned anything before. You will be the first person. Because you are entering into their level. Those people that didn't get it does not mean that they did not do anything. They did something. But because something was against them. Today that embargo has been lifted up. Everything that has stopped people in your generation has been taken away. You are entering into their labor. Enter right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for we know that you have done it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We're going to pray now. God is going to preserve you. There are people that are marked to die. You know, people die before they physically die. But God said, even if you have a mark of death upon you, Psalm 79, verse 11, we are going to pray for life. Jesus said in John 10, 10, I have come that they might have life and have it in abundance. But I want to extend it to, for you to see Psalm 79 and look at verse 11. The Bible says, let the groaning of the prisoners come before you according to the greatness of your power. Preserve those who are what? Appointed to die. Everyone that has been appointed to die, God said he will preserve you. You shall not die. You shall not die. We come against every spirit of death. In fact, in Psalm 118, 118, verse 17, the Bible says, I shall not die, but live to declare the works of the Lord. So why God will preserve you is because you still have a lot of work to do for him. I shall not die, but live to declare the works of the Lord. Some translations say the counsel of the Lord. I shall not die. Every mark of death upon anyone that is hearing the sound of my voice. The Bible says God will preserve you. The Lord shall preserve you. The Lord shall preserve you. The Lord shall preserve you. Everyone that is marked to die. Everyone that has been act to die. The Lord shall preserve you today by the power and the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone that is appointed to die, 
God is taking that away from you. I remember in the book of Isaiah 38, a king was told that he's going to die. He said, prepare your house. The Bible said he prayed on the wall and said, God, remember now what I have done. And God told the prophet Isaiah, say, go back to tell the king Hezekiah that I've added 15 more years. The Lord has added more years for you. Restoration has come upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you for we know that you have done it. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Because of time, I'm just going to take one more. Gen um, Exodus chapter 3, verse 21. Exodus 3, 21. And we're going to thank God and give our offering. Hallelujah. And those of you that are watching online, you can also show from our app there. In the name of Jesus. Exodus chapter 3, verse 21. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. 21. He said, and I will give this people favor. The Lord said, I will give you favor in the sight of your enemies, in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall be when you go that you shall not go empty handed. But every woman shall ask of her neighbor. Hallelujah. Namely, and her and her, and her who dwells near their house, articles of silver, articles of gold, and clothes, and you shall put them on your sons and your daughters. So you shall what? Spoil the Egyptians. Every power that the Egyptians have, their resources, God said, I will give it to you, and you will spoil it. Will put it on your sons and your daughters. You shall ponder it. You shall mess with them. Today, the Lord said, I will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. You are not coming out empty. You are not coming out empty. You will receive the blessings of the land. And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Every Egyptian in your life, God is giving you favor in their sight now. Whoever is holding a job or a business that will favor you, Whoever is the one that will give you that contract, whoever is the one that will give you that space, that business co connection, God is giving you favor in them. I want you to expand your horizon today. Don't just limit God to the people you know. Begin to ask from everywhere because you are favored. Everywhere you go, begin to open your mouth. The Bible says, open your mouth and I shall feel it. Whatever you need, God has positioned men that will give it to you. Today, the Lord has given us the gift of men. God has given you a name. God has also giving you power, anointed you with power, that you go out there, things will begin to happen. The anointing that is upon your life today is not just for you to heal the sick, it's also for you to succeed beyond measure, for you to be prosperous, for you to be elevated, for you to be celebrated, for you to go in the might of God and in the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ, begin to thank God wherever you are now. Appreciate Him. Give him all honor and adoration. Give him all exaltation. Worship him for he is God. We thank you Lord for today. We bless you. This is a night of encounter. Many of you will live here. Your face has changed. Your countenance has changed. You have become another person. Things that have never worked for you will begin to work for you. Things that used to be a struggle shall become very easy. You are favored. The grace of God is upon your life. For the Bible says, For we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, he became poor, that we through his poverty shall become wealthy. Let the grace of our Lord Jesus follow you. Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. Let the grace of our Lord Jesus follow you. Let it begin to follow you right now. Let it follow you right now. Everywhere you go, you shall be celebrated. Men will honor you. Women shall honor you. By the power and the authority, the Lord shall make his face to shine upon you continually. You are going to be the head and not the tail. Everywhere you are, you must be sought for. I say men will sought for you. Women shall look for you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. For we know that you have done it now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. I want us to give our offering. Those of you online, please go on the app in front of you there and just sow into this ministry and God will bless you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ.